All right, there we go. Hey everybody, welcome to a sort of special random live stream. Um, I had a lot of fun on the last stream the other night, so I wanted to do this one. I'm just sitting down, I've gotten a lot of work done today, so I wanted to do a fun, a little bit lighter project. So it's my uh, nephew Harvey's birthday in, um, uh, about two weeks. It's his first birthday and, uh, he's into baby shark, which is, um, uh, if you want, you can mute right now, but I'm about to, to show you this insanity. It's really popular with little babies. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully it's not too loud. But, uh, it's just this thing. Baby shark. <laughs> I've been muted, so I can't hear it. But uh, yeah, that's baby shark. I'm not going to show any more of that. That's already enough. Hey, Connor, Winter Films. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so yeah, this one is a little. Uh, it's not Spider-Man related. This one's just for fun for my nephew because um, I like to do projects for my nephew like this. Um, like, uh, or this is my other nephew, Sebastian. This is a RoboCop helmet I made for him. Um, last Christmas and then this is a Daft Punk helmet I made for him for his birthday a few months ago so that's a baby that's nothing weird we're doing a baby shark here so that's just reference images of a baby um, and then there's a real shark and then this is a this is an image from uh, dreamstime.com I don't like own the rights to this image or anything like that and then we're gonna give it legs so that's why I have this weird image of about half of a baby because it's gonna have a diaper and legs uh, for the sake of it being a puppet um, uh, also or just going into it the first thing I do uh, I start in Photoshop always when I'm doing a 3d model and here is the sketch as well of what I'm going to be making right now, basically. Uh, so this is just the sketch that I did on paper. And my hand is here in that same position as on the sketch for scale, for the sake of scale, when I actually design the actual puppet. Uh, so, and what I have to use for scale here is this eight by, uh, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So starting here in Photoshop with just this sketch, and I based this sketch basically entirely on the, the image you can see right below me, the kind of cartoon image, because I think that one's just like perfect for a, a friendly little shark design. Uh, so what I do, this is just the image I took with my cell phone. I just took a uh, basically like straight above image with my cell phone making sure it's nice and flat and a little distance away. You, you don't want to be too close or else the proportions get a little messed up. So I start with this picture that's just my hand and my sketch. And I'm actually just going to copy the relevant stuff here, which is just that much, using my regular box tool. Uh, copy that. And then what you can do is you can just go in, start a new project, and I do it with inches when I'm working on an actual physical project. So I know I need about 20 inches by, 20 inches width by about 30 inches height, probably to have enough room to design a, a full, full version of this thing. And actually I'm probably gonna need it to be wider because I wanna do the front and side view in the same image here. And I'm gonna do more pixels per inch and you know i've basically already done that so that's over here and then you name it whatever you want i'm naming this harv first baby shark because he's my little nephew harvey um so go ahead and post or paste this image into photoshop and what i'm going to want to do is i'm going to want to view my rulers and that's just these measurements at the top and side that show you how many inches you're dealing with. And what I have for reference on size, like I said before, this is a regular piece of copy paper, eight and a half by 11 inches. So what you can do is you can see my mouse cursor right over here. 
you go into that ruler and you can just drag out a guide. And that just leaves a blue line that's not actually on the image. And you can hold control and that allows you to just adjust a guide if you need it. And that lets you move it around on the, on the fly. So, like I said before, oh hey guys, a few more people in chat. Yeah, I'm, I'm down to chat about whatever. This is actually going to be a pretty long stream because, like I said at the beginning, I'll say it again quickly, I'm designing a shark, a baby shark puppet for my nephew, Harvey, and he's turning one, so I think he'll get a kick out of it. And I'm going to 3D print it and cast it in silicone and stuff. I didn't mention that. And so this one, I'm just going to, I need to get it designed, so I want to just kind of sit down and get through all of this. I'm going to talk about it and talk to you guys, but... Um, yeah, so I'm going to do the whole thing. Maybe not the whole thing. It might take too long. Okay, anyway. What I'm going to do is I've got that guide at one inch, so I need a guide at nine and a half inches because I ate one inch. I could just do one at eight and a half, or zero and eight and a half, or whatever. Make sure everything's going good with the stream. Yep, okay, good. Nothing looks too bad. I don't have two monitors set up right now, unfortunately. Hey, Spidey 3211. Thanks. Yeah, I love I love working on projects like this, so frankly, it's just an excuse for me to work on it and do something kind of fun and unique. And that's all this is. I by no means am a big baby shark fan, but I think he'll get a big kick out of it. And it'll basically be like a little silicone stuffed animal, sort of, that he'll have, but then you'll be able to put your hand in it like a puppet and sing Baby Shark to him. And who knows how, how long he'll even be into Baby Shark, but he'll always have the doll and then this, this video to go with it. Okay, so what I've done here, I've got my... I press V. I apologize that I don't have any type of keyboard or mouse showing what controls I'm hitting. My, my software is out of date and I didn't have time to update that stuff tonight. So I'll just try to tell you what I do. So I press V and that allows me to move whatever layer is selected, which is this image. So I'm able to move this pretty close up there. It kind of is snapping. I don't like snap. Snap means that it snaps images to guides and to the edge. I like to have the control to kind of move things around more freely, but snap helps sometimes. So now that I've done that, I'm going to hit Control T, and Control T is uh, the shortcut for transform, a fast transform, and I'm going to use that. And this is your uh, pivot point if you're rotating at all. Unfortunately, it's not like the pivot point for if you're rescaling it. That would be nice. I'm sure there's some way to do that. So. I rotated it a little bit because it was a little crooked. And now, and it's not gonna be perfect, but um, this is close enough, definitely. So now this sheet of paper is about the same size in the Photoshop document as it is in real life. And the same for my hand because my hand is right next to that sheet of paper. So this is something, I know this is a random project, but if you're working on a Spider-Man face shell, you'd be taking a picture of the side of your head or the front of your head. Well, you would need both for something like that. <clears throat> and then you'd take a sketch or a lot of your reference photos and you'd be doing what I'm doing right here, just in a different way. Or even Venom. I mean, this shark design is definitely suited for a Venom design. Um, so I'm going to back up a little bit here to show that I've got my 20 inches by 30 inch document here. And I don't need it up here anymore because I've already rescaled everything. And these two don't need to be the same size anymore. This, the hand is the perfect size, but the drawing needs to be resized a bunch. So I'm going to take my lasso tool here, nice and easy. Don't have to be too precise. I just want to separate these two things. It's like playing a video game when you're trying to trace a shape, when you try to do any art with a mouse. 
That's what they train you for. All right, so. Oh, I'm just looking at your comments, guys. Yeah, a Black Panther costume would be really cool. And I do want to do Venom a lot. But um, a lot of people, you know, Black Panther is one of those ones. If, there, if, if, ever, if there's someone who's already made something and really knocked it out of the park, it's not as desirable for me to just kind of follow where they've gone. It's more fun for me to do new fun things. So I know you guys like Black Panther, but there's there's a ton of people that do such amazing Black Panther stuff out there. Okay, so I've got the hand selected here, and I'm on this image that is my photo. So I'm going to press Control X, which is Control Cut, you know, as far as Control Copy, Control V. It's different on a Mac. I apologize for Apple users. I've always used Windows. So I've cut that out, and now I'm going to hit Control Shift V. And that's pasted that hand into a new layer on top of my other layer, which is perfect because it's on top already. So now what I can do is get rid of everything else on this drawing. Select inverse, that selects everything but the box. Delete. And now that's a different thing. Yeah, Grant, Grant just said he feels that people's work on Venom has been lacking so far. Um, yeah, uh, I suppose uh, there have been some really amazing sculpts, and there have been some of those sculpts turned into masks, and it's, it's pretty easy to do that, to do just a really highly detailed, like, monster sculpt of the Venom mask. But I've got some pretty cool ideas for what I'm going to do for my Venom mask that I think are going to kind of set it aside. So really fast, what I'm doing here is I'm kind of aligning the hand and like the position. You can see the hand. I'm going to zoom in. You guys might not be able to see because I'm so far away. I apologize for that. I can see better. But you can see in the, the sketch here, I've sketched how I want the hand to go in. It's sort of like Kermit the Frog, just goes in his mouth. And I'm going to do round teeth two rows of roundish teeth that are going to be soft silicone so they won't like hurt but it'll be fun to like bite with them. Uh, this is this is nothing new. There are a lot of shark puppets out there. I've seen some that are like actually pretty high quality that you can buy online for puppet shows and things like that. Uh, it's a pretty big industry for that. So this is basically the shape I'm going to be going for with with all that. I, I was able to just sketch it out. And I sketch the front and the side at the same time, just keeping in mind, okay, the nose ends here, it's gotta end about the same spot, nose ends here, mouth starts here. I did the mouth open on the front just to get an idea of what that's gonna look like. And then you just wanna be as careful to make sure that all of the schematics are the same because it's a blueprint and the, the more accurate you are with your blueprint, the easier a time you're going to have. So, now that I've gotten to this step, the hand is at a good step. Over here in the layers, it's pretty easy to adjust the opacity right here of a layer. So I'm adjusting the opacity of the hand so I can just see right through it. And I'm going to reselect the shark. And now I'm going to transform that. And you can transform uniformly without going in any specific direction by just hitting this link at the top and going up like that. So I'm trying to match my hand to the sketch of my hand. Navigate here a little bit. probably about perfect and that doesn't make the doll too big uh, got some good questions I missed here for a second um, noiseless asked about a homecoming suit and I'm I'm considering doing a couple more patterns in the future so that might be coming up and if I do it, I'm going to do it in a really 
thorough way so that I'll have a small and a large print because that's been a big problem for me is sizing them correctly to everybody. And then another question uh, is about a tutorial for the moving lenses. And uh, yeah, that's something I've, you know, I've talked about that for two years at this point. And I really do want to do that because at this point, I don't really have any plans to make it and like mass produce it because it's so much labor. But I, that I do want to just do a like a tutorial for how you could make it and then if if maybe if you have the the right skill set for it it's pretty tough but and I'll be I'll be clear about that but uh, if you have the right skill set for it then you'll be able to do it yourself or at least see how it's done and modify that um, uh, and thanks for the compliment on the shark I didn't draw the shark that was done by uh, another company by dreamstime.com and it's got their watermark on it. I just thought it was the friendliest looking shark so I used it as a base. Nothing more. Okay, so that's basically the perfect size and that leaves... so let's see. You can see I have the mouse over here at the top of his head and that leaves a little mark here over on the ruler. So if I've got it over here and it's just about above five inches and then his feet are down just above 29 inches so 24 inches 24 inches tall um, and I like to grab a ruler usually in those cases I'm gonna do that really quick Oh yeah, by the way, I just got to give you a look at the Saiyan armor. I forgot to talk about that. That's the Saiyan armor that I'm working on, and that's designed in Blender basically the exact same way that I'm doing what I'm doing right now, but without, uh, you know, just a much different direction, a lot more detail and thought into how it was designed. Um, okay, I have a ruler right here that is 20 inches from bottom to top. So if this thing is a puppet, and it's about 24 inches. That's really big. So I'm thinking I want 20 inches max. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move it down a little bit here. A little bit. Scale it down. <clears throat> then I'm actually just going to Okay, so the top is at about five inches, so I want it at 25, which is right here. And you can do rulers while you're doing transformations on your uh, file. Uh, Connor Winterfilms asked if I'd ever do an Infinity War suit. That one would be cool. It's really highly detailed, and uh, you know, I, I really wanted to do that one, really going all out, but it's not. It's probably not going to be, it's like kind of probably only in the the Infinity Wars movies and then he's just going to go back to a normal Spider-Man suit in the next ones. Um, okay, so I'm moving this up. So I'm stretching the body of the shark a lot right now. So I'm going to make sure I'm not stretching the body too much. But I think that's still enough space in there. Yeah, that's good. And then the legs can just be themselves scrunched. And I'm going to do that here. I'll show you how. So I'm just going to take my lasso tool again. Oh, I better. Um, I've, I've moved the image off the scale. So what you can do in a situation like that is go up, to your, up here to image, take your canvas size, and so I want to extend it off to this left side, so I'm going to click this box. That means that every adjustment that I make is going to go only to the left and centered up top and bottom. So width, I'm going to take that to 40 so that I've got enough room on either side. So there we go. That gives me a lot more space. I actually needed some of that in, on either side, so I'm going to hit Control z Now... I'm going to do the exact same thing, but this time I'm going to just keep the width center on the expansion. So there we go. That gives me enough size or space. So back to what I was doing. 
adjusting the size on these legs selecting only the legs here on both to keep it consistent now I'm gonna cut it out with control X control shift V that puts it on top as a new layer and now I'm transforming it again and so I can just crunch it up here that's perfect because baby legs are squishy anyway they're short and stubby I had them too long I want it to be able to, to dance up and down like the legs will sit and kind of flop so if you went up and down it would flop because that's how baby Harvey dances to the song when he hears it it's pretty funny so perfect I've got this sketch pretty well aligned I've got my hand in there and aligned um, I'm going to do this sketch really fast, all these layers, is I'm going to, well, I'm going to flatten them again, merge them, and then adjustments, brightness, contrast, so I want higher contrast so that everything's sharper, and then I'm going to darken it a little bit so that the lines are a little darker too. That's perfect. So that makes it a little sharper and easier to see. And I'm going to keep this a little... Oops. Oh, I've, I've, I made a mistake. I accidentally included the hand when I merged everything. So I, I had to control Z a few steps. Uh, no Never asked about the PS4 print. Yeah, I'm thinking about all of the prints because that's why I want to step back and go from the start and really tackle the the having a small size print and a large size print so that I can do MCU and I can do PS4 and I can do uh, Iron Spider and all of those that would be really cool and if I had good patterns for each size it wouldn't be that hard and then the more patterns I have the better because then I'm getting more volume which I need to print onto colored fabrics so that would be I'm excited to re reintegrate that because it's not it's not the it's a, it's a lot of labor to do all of the receiving and orders and stuff, but it's not that bad once it gets going. Um, merge layers. There we go. Focus. Oh. So I went back too far, and I undid my leg adjustment. I'm sure maybe some people noticed that. Redo that really quick. Control-X. Control-Shift-V. Control T, bring it up. Bring it back a little bit. All right. Oh, um, so I'm going to go ahead and merge those and make this guy a little more transparent. But I'm also going to try and take my magic wand tool here and get rid of some of the extra stuff around the hand that's working oh, oh. tolerance back down to 15 the tolerance is what controls what how much this tool selects oh, too much uh, that's enough. That gives me just an outline in my hand. I hope that's perfect. Okay. So that gives me my hand there. Oh, uh, for anyone just tuning in, I just noticed a comment in the stream. I'm making a puppet. It's a baby shark puppet for my one-year-old nephew. I like to work on projects for my, my nephews and family just because it's fun. It's a fun project for me. Or fun to do stuff like that for me. Um, uh, so a, a few more things before I'm done with Photoshop, but I am almost done with Photoshop here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that adjustment I wanted to. So brightness contrast. Let's do contrast way up, brightness down a little bit. That clears things up. Now I'm going to... 
separate them a little bit, I think, just so they're not right on top of each other. Control X, Control Shift V. I know someone said before that there's another there's another command for that, but I don't remember what that was, and so <laughs> I've just kind of have just, I've always done the command I've done. So what I've just done here, I just used the pen tool, and I'm I'm making a center line on this front drawing because I only drew half because you only need to make half of things if they're symmetrical. You don't need to go through the process of making one half and then making the other. You do if you sculpt something, but not if you're just making something like this, which is great. It works so well. So let's do three pixels wide. Do it pretty sharp. Let's do a color like uh, blue here. That gives me a nice center line once I get to the next program. I'm going to actually transform because I can tell that the middle here doesn't line up with the middle here. So it's not, it's not straight up and down. So move my pivot point, just rotate a little bit, and that's good. So I'm almost done here with my reference photos. Oh, that's the, the one thing I need to do still. I'm going to take all of these things I've done so far and move them all collectively over a little bit. Uh, see you asking, how are you going to make the pattern from that drawing? Well, you'll see. Basically the 3D design. And you, you can use, use what I'm about to do for anything because I've I've made this design, well, I've done this a lot, so I'm, I'm pretty experienced, but I'm going to go through kind of what I'm going to do, and you'll see what choices I make. So I'm going to select a little bit of the uh, stuff on the edges here and get rid of it so it's a little less cluttered. Now I need that. So I've got my other images here, so I have that one. And I've got the shark open here, and so what I'm actually going to do is I like to copy some of my reference images, like the shark here. I've copied that. I'm going to go ahead and paste that on there. And just, I'm actually going to, since I'm, I'm working on the right side and we're looking at his left side, I'm going to transform flip horizontal. There we go. That's a little easier. And actually, just why not give him about the same angle as the side sketch and make him bigger. Not cut off the fin there. Okay, so that's my main reference image. And I'm putting that on there because this is going to be what I'm making here. I, I guess I haven't really met, rep, or I haven't mentioned it, but what I'm making here is the image that will go into Blender, the program that I'll use to make the 3D model, and that's the, <laughs> there's the baby legs, I need those though. Um, this is the image that will go into Blender, this image right here, and it'll be the backdrop that I'll use for designing the file. And then this, I'm doing the front and side because I can use the same image for both of those. So let me put the baby legs in here. <clears throat> Just getting reference for these kind of doughy brown baby legs because I can design them that way so I might as well. <laughs> Still is pretty weird I know. Baby, Half a baby body. <laughs> but it's like a, a diaper commercial. Think of it like that. So that'll give a lot of good reference for the diaper and for the doughy baby legs. So, <laughs> random project, I know. But it'll be good for going through the process. Um, okay, so those are all the images I need. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it about 32 inches here. So, well, save. That's one thing I haven't done yet. You've always got to save, know where you're saving your image, and save your Photoshop file. 
So I'm going to go ahead and trim the canvas down a little bit here to 33 inches. There we go, perfect. So now I know it's 33 inches wide. So I'm going to save this as a JPEG. Harv first baby shark. And I'm going to note that it's 33 inches wide. That's kind of my <clears throat> little way of doing that. And I'm making it a JPEG there. And I'm just going to save it outside of the reference photos. So that's my main photo, and I'm basically done in Photoshop at that point. So leaving Photoshop behind and going into Blender, uh, this is what you start in with. Start with it when you get into Blender. Let me check the stream, make sure things are going well. All right, great. Okay, so finally in Blender. So this is what you see in Blender. Usually there's a ah yeah they're here the cube and the lamp, I don't know what happened to them, but they're they're here and here. So you have the cube and the lamp. So to get right into it, what you need to do is I go right over here to these three, uh, the, the sun and the cylinder and the sphere, and that allows you to uh, set your unit presets. And I just go right to inches. And if you can do millimeters or centimeters, and I know that's a lot more si simpler, but I like inches a lot. So if you hit five on your keypad, on your number pad, that gives you uh, the orthographic view. And orthographic and perspective is the difference between kind of being more at this angle and you can kind of see things up front are larger and things far away are smaller. So that's the perspective aspect. But if you switch to orthographic, it's just, totally flat. Everything's the same size all the time. And this is what is ideal for when you're doing directly front on or side on modeling like I'm going to be doing here. So um, oh, there, there's my cube back. I delete my cube there. Uh, I need to change a preference really fast. And this is something that a lot of people uh, recommend. So I go into user preferences here. Input and interface actually. So what I'm looking for is what allows me to use my number, numbers above the keyboard There we go. Emulate number pad. That's what it is right here. Emulate number pad. And that's good on a laptop if you don't have a number pad. Because what the number pad allows you to do, now that I've done that, save user settings, the number pad allows you to go one, front, three, right, seven, top. And then a couple of the other buttons, the numbers, allow you to navigate um, uh, around so I'm looking at front right now but if I hit 8 on the number pad it starts to rotate above it's hard to tell without something there so I'm gonna make my cursor to center and make a nice like sphere just to start so you have we have something to look at here um, so I'm in front mode here and if I press these number pad it allows me to rotate around on really even increments kinda like controlling it but one, three, seven are your, your keys. And then also if you hit control one or alt one, wait. Okay, sorry, so control one, that's right. So this is the back ortho right now. It's hard to tell because it's a sphere. But um, this is the back, and if you hit one, it's the front. But control one will go to back and control three will go to left and control seven will go to bottom and that's pretty important when you're just trying to get around an object quickly so when we're jumping into designing with the image we just made i just brought out this tool menu on the right here and that was hidden off to the side but you hit this plus right here and that brings it out so I just am looking for background images down here. So I'm going to hit this 
arrow right here to bring that up and hit background images. Now hit add image. It says not set all views. So I'm going to hit open here and um, go to desktop and I've got the file here. So you just need to find your file and I'm finding the one that says 33 inch width. That's important information. So now that one's visible on all views. I actually want it to be visible on front for now and size down on this right bottom uh, field. It has 10 inches right now. That's where that 33 inches comes into play. That's the width. So now that I've hit that to 33 inches, the background image, I'm going to get rid of the sphere for a second, the background image is already scaled and to size. And I can use a couple of these other windows over here, if, I'm, if you look back over at the background image dialog. So I can just drag these windows here and I can move the background image back and forth. And I'm actually going to go through that process again for the front now that I've gotten that on, or the side. Oh wait, this is the side. So I'm gonna actually call this right. So that when I look at right, that image pops up because that's what I wanna be looking at. Now when I look at front, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, add image, open, desktop, RV, shark, do 33 inches and that brings it right up to the perfect size and I can slide the front one over now and line it up perfectly with that center line. It doesn't have to be super perfect with a sketch like this but that'll get the job done and I have to make sure that it's only visible on the front. So now when I look at this thing I have the front and I have the side just geared up and ready to go. So diving into starting the model for the shark, it's pretty simple and I've already started sort of. I got I have a sphere here which will be a great starting point when you have something that has a rounded head like this shark has. It has a, sh a curved rounded head on top of it and face shells, this is how I always start face shells or any kind of mask like that because it's just easy to, to knock out something like that with a sphere like this that you can edit the shape down. Okay, so <clears throat> getting into this design again, we're looking at it from uh, the <clears throat> right perspective, and if you hit Z, it goes into wireframe. So now I can see right through that object and see down to the shark model. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press S, scale, which is going to shrink this sphere I made. It's kind of lucky this sphere, I had the option when I made this earlier on, when I just kind of made it quickly, to select how many rings and how many segments it has, which determines you can do very, very few or more like this or even more than this, but I think that this is sufficient for what this is. So getting closer to this shark head here, and I want to get this curve about as perfect as I can to that shark head. So you can see I'm close here. It's not perfect perfect, but that's okay for right now. That's basically the start. It's the, the, the very start. Like if you were to sketch a figure and you were to start with a stick figure with a ball for a head, Basically, that's how we're starting this shark right now, is with a ball for a head. So a few more things to get this model kicked off and really get, get working on it efficiently and quickly are modifiers that you're going to want to add to your mesh here. And modifiers can be a little confusing at first and scary, but I'm just going to go through some really simple modifiers to the mesh that will make it look a lot better and not be very difficult to work on. And so the modifiers I'm going to talk about are mirror modifier and the subdivision surface modifier. 
Uh, hey guys, in the comments, by the way. Sorry I haven't referenced you guys in a while. Um, so, into the modifiers. So I have the wireframe of the sphere here. If I can turn it back to a solid sphere. So what I want to do really fast is hit tab. And tab brings up the object editing mode. And this gets a lot more intense. This is all the vertices. And this is where you can select individual vertices and move them around and go nuts. And you could design an entire thing like that. You could really just go like that. Um, but that's not the, the way it's designed to really maximize your workflow. So now that I'm in this object edit mode after hitting tab and looking at all of these vertices, I want to go into my front view. So now I'm looking at it directly from the front and you can see there's a ring here in the middle that cuts it right down the middle. If I hit alt and I select that ring, it selects every single one of those vertices. So now I can do whatever I want with that, but I don't want to right now. Uh, what I do want to do is hit Z. So now that allows me to select uh, the vertices in the front, but also the vertices on the back of the object. So if I tried to select vertices right now, so I hit B, which brings up a box select here, and I try to select this whole half of the sphere, I actually only get one quarter. You see? I only have one quarter of it selected, and that's because it's in this solid view. But if I switch to transparent, and then there's also another uh, uh, option that's a little more advanced down here that allows you to view it in a transparent. <laughs> Sorry, obsessed. I saw you left a comment there. It doesn't. It didn't like your trying to advertise your own channel. Sorry. <laughs> But Obsessed has a, a channel coming up soon if you want to select that. Okay, so I've selected all of half of this sphere now. Actually, I missed, I missed a strand here. I'm going to go ahead and try to select that. Yep, got it. So let me make sure. Oop, too many now. Unselect you. I wish I could show you the keyboard what the keyboard was doing right now because it's, it's a little easier if you can see these keyboard commands I'm doing because as I've told you really fast I'm going to hit delete the vertices I'm only deleting the vertices and I'm left here with half of this sphere but I want to tell you really quick that when I hold alt again it allows me to select these rings but it, look it's only selecting one ring at a time if I hold alt or <laughs> sorry if I hold <laughs> if I hold alt and shift I can select multiple rings so as you can see I'm going through and selecting these multiple rings and that allows you to do some some pretty you know I'm, and, and I'm deselecting too you can select and deselect and that's allowing me to do some more complex stuff with what I'm doing so now I could I could scale it and do something crazy like that like how easy was that well that cool shape that I just made just out of doing a crazy scale after selecting a couple of rings. Um, but that's not what I'm doing right now, but that's just a cool little tidbit. So, now that I've deleted half of this sphere, and I'm actually, while I'm at it, going to delete the bottom half too. I don't want the bottom half. I'm gonna build from the bottom down. Delete all of that. So now that I have this quarter sphere, I'm going to add my mirror modifier. So over here, the wrench. The wrench is your modifiers. You hit the mirror modifier in the modifier list. And so now already you can see it's just made this nice perfect little mirrored version of what I'm working on on this axis. And if you hit clipping, that means that these middle vertices won't go anywhere. They're not going to separate in the middle. If you don't have clipping, and sometimes you have to unselect that, it allows you to move it back and forth and spread them apart and open them in case you need to, let's say, move them and then add a new face by selecting all of those open vertices and then hitting F. So now I've added a new face in there. So that's something you might need to do at some point. Uh, not now for me, so I'm just going Control-Z through all of those. Hey Claire and Rise, all of you guys saying hi. It's nice of you to come here and, and check out my stream. 
Okay, so I've gotten that much done of that modifier, the mirror modifier. So you can see the curve is actually pretty good on the front of the shark here. It doesn't have to have that much done to it on the shape, actually just probably widening it, widening and altering the shape. On the front, it's definitely too perfectly curved. Um, so the first, before I get into reshaping the, the dome here, I'm going to add my next modifier, which is subdivision surface. So right now, you can see that this model is very much a polygon, very, if you were working on an N64 video game, this is very much like a polygon. So we're gonna add subdivision surface, and you can see already what that does is it goes through, and that's this is the option for that right here, and it adds a, a sub, subdivision between your vertices. So you can see I still have my really basic vertices until I apply this modifier. And you don't need to apply your modifiers until the very end. You don't need to apply mirror right away. and You don't need to apply subdivision right away. You keep them just in this form right here throughout the design process because then you can turn them off or get rid of them or copy them or paste them or things like that. So now that I've got this subdivision surface modifier on, when I move a point like this, it doesn't make a really sharp point. It makes it just a, like a little bump, like a really simple, that's almost a very simple start to the eye shape that I'm going to incorporate right here. It's not in the right spot, but as an example, it, it really, it shows you that quickly. So now that I have those modifiers on there, I don't need to worry about those for now, and I can basically just start designing the shape of this shark. And you could totally be designing a face shell or a venom mask or anything in this same vein that I'm doing this here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is introduce you to, uh, I don't know what it's called to be honest, but what it does, you Select, you, you press O, here, okay, that just made it change here, fall off. So proportional editing, that's what it's called. So when you press O, you initialize proportional editing. This might be confusing if you don't know, but O turns this on and off. So now that I've hit O and I hit G to grab that vertice, you can see I've got this circle or that started around where I'm moving this vertice. And if I move my scroll wheel, that circle gets bigger. And you will also notice that as that circle gets bigger, the area that's effective, affected just gets bigger and bigger. So I'm gonna hit Z, or oops. So I'm gonna undo by right clicking. If you right click in a transformation like that, it just undoes it. So I'm gonna hit Z so you can see the shape. And again, if I move that with that large, I'm scrolling to change the size that of the area that's affected. But if I move that, it really allows me to fluidly change the shape from a, a hump like this or a bigger bump. Really just that gives you a, a lot of your control when you're designing something natural and fluid like a shark that I'm designing right now. So what I'm going to do is have these, these two central vertices selected. I was able to just select those by clicking the hot, outermost area and it selected the central most vertices and another quick tidbit that will help you in design you hit the period on the number pad and it will focus on whatever vertices or objects are selected so you see that now I'm I'm rotating around those vertices and I really am able to get an easy view on those vertices right there but if I was working on say this vertice over here but i was trying to work and oh, i was rotating and it's really annoying because the rotation has gone nuts on me now and i can't control it Ugh. so you hit period on the number pad and that just allows you to focus your view on that and you'll do that a lot if you get into blender design so back to where i was remember i select off and above and i hold shift to select multiple vertices and I have proportional editing on and a pretty large circle of influence and I'm just moving backwards here 
I'm trying to move the, the shape of the head back a little bit, not so far forward. And I'm, I'm moving backwards specifically because I want to keep these rings as flat up and up, or as flat forward and backwards as I can. And I want to keep these other rings as even as I can because then it gets really easy to edit your shape later on when you're doing really fine editing on like cleaning up awkward bumps and things. If, if everything is nice and flat and easy, it's easy to tell where odd things are out of place. Okay, so I basically already got that shark head shape. I'm going to move, select these ones, and just get that moved back like that. And again on the back here, same story. Sorry if I'm <laughs> if I'm not in the middle of the camera, I keep forgetting about that. I've probably been that like that for a while now. Okay, so the head goes to about there. So just looking over the shape, that's a pretty good dome. You know, I just want a nice, simple, friendly shape, friendly shark shape. I don't want him to be threatening or menacing at all. And I'm also going to kind of put it forward a little bit. I have it a little too rounded on the top right there. So now, from the front, I can edit that as well. And I can tell his head is just going to kind of angle out here like that. And I'd say that's probably his little mouth. So I'm going to hit O again. Now I'm turning the proportional editing off. Hit Z so that you only see what I'm doing. So I'm just going point by point and already doing a little bit of cleanup work to smooth out how his nose and his cheek here are different. So I've already got that. I'm going to go to 3 here because that's important. So let me... That's my outermost point. But from three in my sketch, I was clear to show where the cheek is here. I need that all to be a little further forward to be about right there. And I'm gonna turn off proportional editing again and move this so that again, he's, it's, this is the corner of his mouth so it matches up again. And, uh, Next, what I think I can deal with is how his the forehead deals with the nose and around the eyes. So I'm going to do another thing a little complex here. So I'm going to select this just short little ring of vertices right here that's going to be above his nose. So he's going to want to have like a kind of curved, you can see it in the front, his kind of curved Ninja Turtle-esque nose here, and it's way too high up here, and I want these vertices to be down a little bit. Actually, you know what? I'm changing my mind right there. I do that a lot while I work. I don't necessarily want to move these ones. I think I can just cut new vertices right here and cut along that, and I'll show you how I do that. So I'm going to press K, and that brings out my knife tool. So now you can see I've got this knife tool that's making plink, plink, pink blocks on the 3D model. So I'm gonna get as close, and you'll see my sketch is really rough. I haven't mentioned this, it's really rough. What I do is I do a really rough sketch like that and I just, I kinda squint at it in a way. I squint at it and I see where the solid, the best part of the design is and I just ignore the rest. And it's pretty easy for me to do that at this point. So I've taken out my knife tool here. It's in this mode and uh, nothing that you do with the knife tool sets in place until you hit enter. So I'm going to start in the middle here, about where the bridge of the nose starts, and I'm going to go along where it hits each of these vertices, staying pretty flat in the middle, not going totally at an angle, but I'm going to come along, I'm going to meet this point over here, and that's exactly what I need, and hit enter. So now I've, I've changed the shape a little bit here, and I can even, if I wanted to, take these ones, that are left at the bottom here. And I can grab these 
I'm only focusing when I'm moving these right now on this vertice right here. And so now another good thing for me to talk about is the 3D cursor. So I left click and that puts the 3D cursor down. When you're new to Blender, the 3D cursor will be so annoying. It was, it was definitely so annoying to me because I was like, why do I need this? Why does this always get put down when I click? It's just really annoying. But basically when you click the 3D cursor around a vertice like that, and then go to this little window right here that's got the two circles inner 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 uh, interlocked i guess you you press that and select 3d cursor and now that changes how you're moving and scaling and rotating things so now you'll notice when i rotate it rotates only from the perspective of the 3d cursor and i can actually delete these vertices down here just delete the vertices and so again I've just already really simply started the shape of this thing and I'm probably not going to need these vertices down here in the same way I'll, I'll end up moving them around a little bit but uh Next, what I'm definitely going to want to deal with, well, I'm, I'm going to need to clean this up, definitely. Every time you do something like that, you need to look at it and see, okay, it's a little off. It's a little wide right now. That's the main thing. Um, the nose is definitely way too wide. So, yep, just selected that. I, I hit I hit con or Alt, and it just selected that. Alt, Shift, and it selects and adds. So, oh, and I don't want, well, actually, I might want these. So hit it from one. And a good way, if you need to get the 3D cursor right into the middle, you can click and hope you've gotten it, but you can also directly affect the 3D cursor over here on your tool menu. I just hit X, hit zero, enter, and now your 3D cursor is right in the middle. So now when I hit, or I'm going to change my manipulation mode down here because right now it's on the arrow, which means that I'm able to change the movement, just move it around. I'm going to hit this one with a square, which will change the scale. This one with the curve will change the rotation, but this one will change the scale. And this is nice because I can just hit this red bar right here, and that will only affect the x axis. And so that's about what I want, but that wasn't enough of what I wanted. So I'm going to hit Control Z. It was a little too awkward of a movement. So I'm going to hit O again. And again, that's my proportional editing. And that's editing what I've got selected and then some, which is exactly what I need now to make this shape make a little more sense for his head. Boom! That is a much, much friendlier, nicer dolphin shape, like forehead, because that's what I'm going for. A shark is a very triangular, angular kind of mean thing, but if you look at the, the drawing right below me that this is based off of, it's going to be a nice, friendly thing. Uh, okay, so back to one here. His eyes are going to kind of be about right. Oh, I need to turn clipping back on. I turned clipping off. And I need to really quick also select my middle vertices using Alt. And now I'm going to move them back and forth. And that, oops, unselect proportional editing. Move them back and forth. And that makes sure they're locked together and clipping. Press A to unselect that. So I'm going to select what I had before with Alt Shift again. Hit one, hit, oh, that was two steps back. So. I'm getting this eye alignment prepared. So I'm going to select this ring here. Another quick shortcut is to, if you hit G, you're just grabbing all of these vertices and you're able to move them from whatever your perspective you're looking at them. But if you hit G, G, good game, it allows you to slide the vertices if you're, if you're on a model like this. And this is comes up all the time. This is a, a tool that you will use all the time. So I'm not sure exactly where I needed to take that, so I'm going to do that again. So I'm lining it up right with where that eye contacts. And that allows me to get all of this 
So this, I'm going to go downward using GG again on these. And I'm just lining up the eye on my sketch here. Okay, so yeah, it needs to be moved massively. Um, so I'm going to slide it down closer to that angle down there. And a lot of this you're just going to be watching me sitting and, and figuring out a puzzle. And that's why I'm doing this. Um, <laughs> it's it's late at night and there's, there's not even too many of you watching right now. There's been a, a few concurrent watchers, so it's been fun. But um, I think this is a good project for getting into blender basics as I just kind of rush along and dive right into the basics here. So thinking about where the eye comes forward, the eye needs to go a lot forward here. So I'm going to hit this arrow to move it forward. But the back of the head doesn't need to go forward because the eye is going to be basically jutting out here in a way. So I actually am going to just go ahead. I'm going to seal this, this face off here. I don't like weird little tabs like that. So I select all three vertices like this and hit F and that faces it. That gives it a face. Um, Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change my selection mode. So I was selecting vertices before down here. You can see this is vertices. You can also select edges and you, you can select faces. So I'm going to select faces here and I'm going to get this one, this one, this one, and this one gone. Oh, really fast. I've, I've realized that my, my proportions are not quite right on here, so I need to make an edit here before I start editing the eyes. Uh, make sure my proportional editing is on, and I need to move the cheek back out because I edited it and moved it forward. Just get the general shape kind of back on track here. Now I need to move the eye back again. I'm just having my moments where I'm just kind of figuring out the best moment way to go forward. So I need to move that forward over again. There we go. That's pretty good. So that's a pretty happy, friendly shark right there. Maybe that cheek is a little far. Well, that's the eye. Um, this one's probably the one that's not quite right. It's to just kind of be a little more natural. That looks pretty good for a shark shape so far. I know that that's going to start to taper out a little bit already because it's going to go right into the dorsal fin. Yep, it goes right into the dorsal fin there. So I need to just get that started already. Um, so I've been pretty bad about this and I'm, I'm kind of bad about this on streams and stuff, but what you should be doing right now is saving. And now you haven't done this in nearly enough. You always save as. And I'm going to do Harv Baby 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 Shark 1. And I always number them because it's good if you're working on a really complex file, like if you're working on, you know, a, a full Iron Man suit or something like that, it's really good to go through and name everything like one, like this is Harv Baby Shark 1, because if I were to work on this for a few days, I'll save a subsequent file, Harv Baby Shark 2. And then I have Harv Baby Shark 1 to go back on later on, and it'll have like different stuff that I've, I haven't edited as much, 
And that comes in really handy later on if you accidentally delete something you needed and you save and you don't have it anymore. You can, a lot of times if you're good about that, you can go back. Um, hey, ramen boy. Yes, yes, that's Saiyan Armor in the background. Your name makes me hungry. <laughs> that's going to be the hardest thing about this stream. I have an apple here that I kind of want to eat eventually, but I don't want that to be too distracting. So uh, hopping back into designing now that I've gotten it saved. Kind of rounding out the back shape a little bit. So I'm going to get back into where I was with the eye before I got things a little better aligned. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to do a, a knife move like I did before. And I'm going to cut where the back of the eye is going to come up and along. That's enough. So now that allows me to select those faces I had before. And I don't even really have to delete them. Here's a really easy thing you can do. Okay, so you see my rotation's all wacko and weird. I mentioned this a moment ago. Hit period on the number key and that refocuses. And so now here's a fun move. I'm just gonna hit E. Now what E does is it extrudes. So as you can see here, it just, <laughs> it's gonna look a little weird. It looks a little bit more like uh, knuckles, Ugandan knuckles here. But um, that's a good start. You know, it's a start to building those eye sockets. So what I can do right away to make that look a lot less horrible is I can go from an angle like directly above right here and I can just grab it freely Make sure that I'm not editing too much. Okay, there we go. Grab it freely there, and I'm going to move my 3D cursor to the edge, and the 3D cursor is selected right here for rotation. Now I'm gonna rotate, and it'll rotate based on my view right here. So the view is important. So the view just brought that down a lot. It can go up a lot, and back a lot, a lot, a lot. And that builds a very simple start to the eye socket there that I can go ahead and go by vertices and just really quickly go in and start, a, start sort of cleaning up here based on the shape I've got here for the eye. Oh, that's way too far forward. Although, here's the thing that I will say, because I just said that the eye is way too far forward right now. That might be the case, but also I've noticed in, that sometimes you'll be designing and your sketch isn't perfect. You don't you don't know 100% what the shape of things are going to look like when you design that way. So it's it's important to be open to things changing in the program because the 3D program is way more versatile for that. So what I'm going to do to alter that really quick, is of, course, of course, a little more object editing, proportional editing, I mean. Right over there. See how that looks. Uh, that's pretty good. But I think it shouldn't be too far back. His forehead shouldn't be too too far forward. It's kind of on the same level as his eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna take just these bottom vertices that are gonna kind of serve as my eyelids right there. I'm gonna turn off my proportional editing and kind of reshape these a little bit, give it a rounder base. This one's going to really come in, as will this one probably. Oh, those ones are actually much further up and out, but this is just the start of how this thing begins 
coming out of the head. It doesn't have to be perfect in and of itself. So, now what I do, that I kind of have my eyelids going here, go a little further towards that actually, here, like that, and that's too far actually. Um, Uh, so what I just did, you might not have noticed, is that I just brought a vertice. I'll do it really quick again. I slid a vertice all the way down and met up with another vertice. So those two vertices are just right on top of each other right now and will kind of look weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the vertices and remove doubles. And that just got rid of that vertice. So now it's just the only one. And you can also just merge them a little more simply, but that's just a good way that I like to do it. So I recommend it. That's an easy way. Okay, cleaning up how these eye bumps are gonna come into the head here, since that's kind of the foundation that I need to build off of. Oop, I went way too low there, I think. sketch. I have the eyelids definitely coming out way too far forward, whereas it should just be the cheeks sort of coming out above the eyelids a little bit. So the eyelids actually are going to be going in. I kind of mistake that shape a bit. That's pretty friendly so far. Still a little wide, actually. A little wider than I want it to be. Okay, so going forward, I'm going to actually now go ahead and delete these awkward faces in here. I don't need those in there. So I'm extending that again to kind of build the shape of the eye again and back to vertices. I'm going to bring those back down, way down, because they're not nearly as important for building that shape. Three. There we go. Looking good so far. Looking like a shark. Friendly kid shark. Bring that back up again a little bit. So it's going to be a struggle not to have these look a little weird. What that's going to kind of be key is that these the inner inner side of the eye I'm realizing has to be really kind of on the same level as the outer edge so that's got to go back enough that it can do that and then maybe move them together forward so there we go that's a little more forward looking Okay, his eye is still too high here. So I'm going to just turn off proportional editing and move that down to where I have it in my drawing. sketch isn't the best thing to work off of because it's just 
clearly not that detailed and it's not very clear it's kind of hard to tell where things are I actually kind of need to hide hide this thing for a second hide hide my model so the top of the eyeball is about here just looking at the eyeball shape really quick so like the top of the eyeball is right here use my 3d cursor and the arch is here so bring that back I want this to be the top of the eyeball here and make the eyeball shape like so and then I'm going to use these just kind of cheat it a little bit as the upper bump and I think that'll work So you can see I'm moving this vertice, but when I'm in this mode, <clears throat> you can see the mesh in there very lightly, which is what's actually being, oops, that wasn't the right button. What? Okay, my shift key is stuck. I don't know, that's cool. Okay, there we go. <laughs> that was neat. So what that, you can see that when you edit these points, the shape is changing pretty drastically underneath. I can go ahead and move these up a lot to make that brow thicker. Uh, Ramen Boy asked if Blender is free or do you have to pay for it? And uh, Blender is definitely free and it's nice. You can just download this program tonight and do what I'm doing right now. Go for it. Learn it. It's a, it's a good skill. 3D design is never going to go away. If you're good at it, it's it. I will say I I clicked with it really easily because I've got a very spatial mind. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that. So I've got a very spatial mind, so it was very easy to, for me to just kind of click into it. But I think I still encourage anyone else to give it a try, give it a shot, and see if if you click into it really easily too. Because I, I clicked into it really quickly, and like I'm just so happy I did, because it's changed a lot of my work a lot. In a lot of ways. A lot, a lot of ways. So I'm kind of trying to get into my workflow mode here. You know, I kind of went through the basics with you guys, and I can't just always go through all of the basics every time, so this one's definitely... going through them a little bit, but it's fun to just hang out with you guys and make something in Blender. So, so I'm building the eyelids. And then I'm, I've kind of got the socket in here ready for the eye. It just needs to have that face added in. Okay, that's a nice friendly shark, which is what we're going for here. Looking at my reference photo here. Okay, so he doesn't have quite so much just eyelids as it is just bumps into his eyes. His cheeks bump up into his eyes. Always is helpful to have a reference image like that cartoon of that shark. <clears throat> just if you're ever wondering, does this shape look right? Does this thing look right? You just always go to your reference. 
And you got it. Well, considering it's almost 10 o'clock, um, I'm guessing I'm not going to get through this whole thing tonight, but uh, I'm going to keep going for a while, because it's a lot of fun to do these guys, types of projects. Okay, so I'm just going to do the eye really fast here. Actually, really, really quick adjustment. Move that inner corner in a little bit. A little bit more. There we go. Number two. So, take this eye. Now I'm going to hit E to extrude, but then I'm going to right click and that moves it the extrusion back to its original point. It's still there, as you can see, it's still there, but it's moved. So I'm going to cursor to selected. So now the cursor is right in the middle of all of those. So if I hit scale now, whoop, you can see it, it closes that gap like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing again, E to extrude right click and it's still there now scale like that and now I'm gonna do it one more time but now this time I'm just gonna merge at center so that gives me my my kind of web to do my eyeball shape here so I'm just gonna go ahead and take all those points not these ones take all those points and move them forward a little bit and now unselect those. Should be coming to the side here. And now the middle. And there's going to be a little bit of a cleanup to do with that to get it to look nice and even. You could just do spheres as the eyes, but I figure that's easy enough. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and try to add another line of vertices in there. Let's see if this works. Yep. Okay, so Control-R. Control-R, as you can see, it's giving me a couple options for adding new lines of vertices. So if you hit Control-R, you're allowed to cut up certain ge geometrical shapes. So I just did it right here. And let me go like right there. Why not? So I'm going to go from 3 here, and I'm actually going to scale, but I'm going to hit Shift-X. And when you hit Shift-X, that means that it's scaling in every axis but X, so only Z and Y. So it's not changing too much. Um, and I'm also just going to get rid of these vertices right here because they're kind of superfluous at this point. Remove doubles. And so now that I've got that point to clean up the eyebrow shape a little bit here, which just means basically taking it and rotating it out a little bit like that. That cleans it up a lot, gives it just a nice cartoony rounded shape. You can even scale it down a little. And so, got a pretty good eye shape there. Looks like the this portion of the eye could kind of be higher and kind of come in a little sooner, I suppose, like this. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, and it's a little more jovial and round, not like flat. So that looks pretty good. So another little lesson here. I'm going to outline the eye. I have the eye already outlined here. So I want a, I've got the subdivision surface here, and I want a harder line. I want a sharper line where it div divides the eye from this eyebrow shape. 
So what I need to do is go up to this mean crease box right here, mean crease, and I'm going to hit 0.5. One is the sharpest line. 0.5 is kind of like a half rounded line and you can go really low or up to one and it gives you a bunch of different options. But for this, it was perfect because it just gave me a division between a harder line between the eye itself and the eyebrow around it. So just playing with the shape here, kind of getting it exactly how I want it. And I, he doesn't have like huge empty space behind, behind the head, so I've, I've kind of got a little bit too much of a, oops, a little too much of a big divot going here. That, that looks a little bit better already. All right, so that's already coming along nicely for a baby, a puppet for a baby. I just have to make sure that with those eyes, that when it's going, it, it looks like it's looking at little Harv. So I'm going to kind of change the shape a little bit here. Pretty good. Baby shark do 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 do. <laughs> All right. So that's one of the more complicated parts of this model, pretty much right there, is the eyes and uh, the mouth is going to be pretty complicated, and then uh, everything else is just kind of pretty basic along those same lines. Um, so basically, since I've kind of hit a point, whenever you're in your work and you hit a point where you're like, hmm, yeah, I like that. I like how that looks. Um, I have a little more tweaking to do. but. Anyway, what I'm saying is whenever you're at a point in your work where you like what you're at and what you do, just save right at that point. Because if you have a unreliable computer or a power outage or anything like that, uh, you could easily lose a lot, of, a lot of work, a night's work, if Windows decides it wants to update on you at 4 a.m. after you've been working all night. Because that's, of course, the perfect time for that to happen. But um, no experience with that, I promise. No prints that have been lost to that forever. But, uh, so it's always just a good idea that when you get to a point where you're, you're pretty happy with how it's going at that point. So there you can see on the sketch that I've got, go ahead and save. On the sketch I've got, I've kind of got it's it going on in both directions. There's shark head here and shark head here. Um, now another thing I haven't done yet, and it's really not that important as long as I have a picture of it here, is it's it's it might be a good idea to um, make a model of your hand because I have my hand in this form for the puppet under that reference image right there. And so it's a good idea to, um, to uh, make a model of like your hand like this. If it was something advanced like a mask or a piece of armor or something like that, that's what I would definitely do to be sure. But I, I think I'm probably going to be okay just with this picture of my hand and then I'll just wish, <laughs> I'll measure how wide my hand is. And my hands are pretty big, so I doubt anyone will have bigger hands than mine. So I think just the shape of the mouth being open like this and a, a opening in the back will make it a puppet. 
And so I'm going to keep designing this and then um, I'm going to 3D print all of it, which will involve splicing it all apart, uh, cutting all the pieces apart and in, in Cura and then getting it all 3D printed and put together and then I'm going to get it all sanded and finished and then make a mold and then um, make a silicone mold of that inside of that so it'll be a nice rubbery and try to get a good like soft finish texture on it but a nice rubbery puppet kind of stuffed animal puppet so I think it'll be a really neat thing and it's it's just a really fun project I know it's kind of some people look at things like this and they're like you're putting a lot of time into that but it's a really fun project for me and I have all the materials it doesn't cost me anything I like everything all the filament and uh, silicone and all that so it's just a fun little way to stretch my my creative muscles you know you, it's just like I, I really recommend that whenever you have like a project that's just random or you have building a piece of furniture or um, like a painting for the wall just things like that really kind of like keep you thinking in different different directions rather than always uh, on the same thing over and over like I can kind of tend to be so that's pretty good so far that's a pretty good cartoon shark character I'd say if anything maybe something like that would be even better but still that's pretty good maybe lower too because it's his cheek that's pretty jolly for a shark so that's what I'm gonna be working on in the late nights over the next two weeks and I'll, I'll have more pictures to share of that and I think it'll be a pretty neat little thing and I mean who knows maybe it'll be something I can produce because it's not it's not copyrighted or anything and if I have the molds I could just make silicone shark puppet dolls so <laughs> we'll see maybe maybe some rich parents will like to buy those for their babies and do a baby shark for them so <laughs> um, so that's I'm gonna call it there I think it's been about an hour and a half let's see here uh, oh I wouldn't know there let's see back on to YouTube uh, stats stats there we go yeah it's been about an hour and a half um, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it there it's pretty late it's been a lot of fun. I was, I'm really happy that I was able to jump in and just do a stream like this really uh, casually because I do projects on my computer like this all the time. I mean, I'm, most nights I'm usually doing something like this, so it makes me happy to be able to sit out here and, and get content on the internet and build my channel and stuff at the same time. So uh, thanks for viewing. If you're just tuning in, this was a baby shark puppet for my nephew Harvey. Shout out to him and Sebastian and, you know, all my, my little nephews and nieces. So love all of them. But uh, thanks. Oh, uh, I get, I've got some questions here, so I'll, I'll answer that. Ramen Boy, if you have questions, uh, ask those right now. Type that in right now before I shut off. Ramen Boy asks, do you have any ideas for beginners? Um, uh, Batman suits are good. Foam armor suits are good. Um, that kind of stuff is a really good thing to get into. That, that's how I got into it at a young age. I, I did things like um, a Bubba Fett suit. I did Batman, Iron Man. I did a lot of Master Chief stuff, but never got a Master Chief suit done. And uh, that kind of stuff is really just how you build at it. And I, I caution from doing something really crazy, like a full Iron Man or something really nuts. It's better to do like a mask or a, even just an experiment and test on a project. Because then you learn the hard lessons there and you can just apply them to your actual further project. And um, uh, uh, as far as like beginner projects, other good beginner projects, I guess just like good beginner mask making, like you can make a plaster mold of your head for sculpting masks, and that's a good way to start with making masks and stuff, because I know a lot of you guys are, are interested in like face shells and stuff. Um, uh, Wolf, Wolf Frutos asked, how many Spider-Man suits, face shells do you have? 
uh, suits. I actually don't have, I only have like two or three fully sewn together suits with like zippers and stuff because it takes a lot of work to get them there. And so usually when I'm doing that, it's for someone else and for commission. But um, uh, face shells, I've got a million face shells. I've got face shells out the wazoo in my garage. Like I have uh, boxes of defective face shells from all my different um, eras. <laughs> And I've thought of uh, selling those cheaper, just as defective face shells for different projects, but a lot of them have problems with them that would make them not work quite right for that. <clears throat> All right, well, I'm uh, I'm eating candy here, uh, <laughs> and so I'm hungry, so I better sign off. Ramen Boy's name has me hankering for some ramen. Probably go make some egg drop ramen right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, once again, this was a lot of fun. It was really a great time hanging out with everyone tonight. And I'm excited at the prospect of getting out here and doing this a lot more because this is just so easy and these are things I do all the time anyway. So picture and picture and picture and picture and picture and picture. <laughs> okay, um, better not show any valuable information about my OBS stream here. Uh, okay, so that's all for tonight, guys. Uh, I'm going to call it at that. It was great hanging out with you guys, and I will be back here soon, because why not? Cool. See ya.